Hey, Russ. Hey, Suds. <laughs> nice, of, nice of you to join us here. My pleasure. I'm always excited to be here at the semifinals of the U.S. Open. You saw some good racquetball yesterday with Chris Crowther uh, getting by Bancroft in three. You, I think you actually said it's the best racquetball you've seen Crowther's play. And what does he have to do today to beat someone who's had his number for a while, Rocky Carson? Yeah, I, I, I've been watching Chris play for about 15 years. I've played with him on tour for many years. That was the best I've ever seen him play. And, and by that, I mean it looked like he just dominated the court. He dominated center court, dominated control. And more than anything, what I noticed, he was hitting the ball harder than everybody else, including Kane, for that one match. That's exactly what he's got to do today. Stay aggressive and make himself big, bigger than he already is. Good start by Rocky Carson, slowing the game up with a half lob Z to Chris's backhand and getting the first point. Yeah, Rocky's always consistent. He's very comfortable in this setting, and I don't see him getting flustered by any means. Chris will have to go out and beat him. See, like even that start, Russ, that return to serve by Chris, I'd rather see him take a full swing and cut at it with some aggression and some power behind it. He looked like he kind of took a little bit off. That's exactly what I don't want to see from him today. Even though that worked. Yeah, it worked, but I didn't think it was a great shot. That skipped. Oh, I thought that skipped from up here, no? But I think we were 100 feet away, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're in the Euchre my, seats? What my, is it? Bob Euchre Bob seats, Euchre. yeah. <laughs> Rocky switching from lob serve to jive serve real early. That's what Chris did well yesterday, if you remember. He was burying everything in the right corner. Uh, uh, right. Play, playing the forehand of the person instead of just playing the natural shot cross court. Yeah, for whatever reason, Russ, the glass on the right side seems to be a little bit tougher to pick up for the guys. I was hitting on the court this morning, and I didn't have that problem. But <laughs> <laughs> Very close serve. Not called by the short referee, but called by head referee Charlie Pratt. Charlie Pratt, as always, doing a fantastic job. So many times, Russ, Rocky hits a ball. I can't. It, it almost seems like it skips because he, like, slices it, you know, to the front wall. Right. He doesn't hit a flat backhand, Rocky. Not, not, mm -hmm. uh, maybe sometimes up front when he's pounding, but he does slice a lot from the back very successfully. Yes, obviously. Number two player in the world. That's what I'm talking about. Chris doesn't look comfortable already. You see how he's not aggressive and popping at the ball? Might, might be a little nervous first, yeah, first, uh, first couple of points being on a court that Rocky plays on all the times with all of his success. Chris has been on this court a few times, has had some, some success, but let's see what happens. I'm so glad Rocky changed his outfit, too. He went away from the all-white. Looks good. It was time. Time for a change. Maybe that'll be the... Rocky's new clothing sponsor, Court Outfitters. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Did not know that. I heard you got sponsored by Big and Tall recently. <laughs> <laughs> See, now all, all the listeners need to know I'm actually in better, way better shape than I have been. Eric Mueller says hello. Eric Mueller, listen. Nice shot, Chris Crowder. Actually, Sudzi Munchak, I made a comment yesterday that you were sponsored by Dunkin' Donuts, and some fans uh, texted in. They, 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 they didn't like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm considering actually taking this microphone off, Pablo. <laughs> You're considering a yeah, lawsuit? And Lisa just texted me, my wife, ha ha, big and tall. Thanks. I'm glad she's enjoying it. <laughs> Let's get back to the match here. She loves watching Rocky. Doesn't everybody? Yeah, well, it's pretty easy on the eyes. <laughs> That's what he's got to do. Play big, get wide. He's already 6'6", but there is a way, there's an art to making yourself bigger than what you actually are. You could take up a lot of space with that body, and, and you, you want to try to really make your opponent feel uncomfortable. You know, and at this level, clearly you're going to have to make these guys feel uncomfortable to win. That hurts. Yeah, footfalls will hurt Crowthers because 
the more he drives serves, the more shorts he hits or whatever, the more wear and tear he has on his six foot six body as opposed to Rocky, uh, who doesn't have that problem. And the longer the match lasts, the longer it, longer it favors Rocky Carson. So it's actually better for Chris would be better off getting a good start. And he's not on the board yet, but he is playing okay. It's early, and, and, and it's a feel-out process. Both players are kind of getting acclimated to the situation. The Today's match, um, you know, when you find your groove and then you get on. Hindu packed call house. by Charlie Pratt. Packed house here today. Yes, we expect a pa packed house in the semifinals. The next semifinal match will feature Jose Rojas and number one player in the world, Kane Wasilenchuk, on his 120 unbeaten match win streak. Looking to add one more U.S. Open to his three in a row. And that will be at scheduled at 4 Central Time. It's impressive. I think I'll be in the booth doing that one as well. That'll be fun. 0-2, Crippler. Chris Crowther in here needs to get a point somehow. Two foot faults already called on big Chris Crowther. Pablo is going to the replay. Maybe. And Pablo has told us that it was not a foot We'll try to get that replay for you. Even the crowd's feeling out the situation. They're not sure yet how to root, where to go, which player they want to root for. Crowd always likes to root for the underdog. Yeah, people were impressed in this crowd yesterday with Chris Crowther's win over number three player in the world, Ben Croft. Rocky also had a three-game victory over Shane Vanderson. <laughs> <clears throat> a serve by Rocky Carson up 3 to 0 definitely not the start you want if you're Chris you want it to come out firing kind of carry the momentum from yesterday's match into today's match and he hasn't seemed to he just doesn't look comfortable he's not crushing the ball yet you know he's not getting any chances Rocky is steady. He doesn't make too many mistakes. Compliments of his coach, Fran Davis. Second serve for Carson. John Scott will be back shortly after game one to join Sudzy Munchik and myself. Carson looking to Z-serve Crowther's backhand. And the crippler crushes it. That should give Chris a little confidence. Chris trying to get on the board here. He already looks totally different. The way he's moving, his footwork, the way he's striking the ball. He looks like a different player than yesterday. And, you know, like you asked me at the beginning, he's going to have to play exactly the same way he played yesterday to have a chance today against Rocky. Tentative backhand shot by Crowther. Rocky Weak shot by Crowther. Couldn't be any worse of a start for Chris. Carson drive serving once again. Up 5-0, game one. 
decent time out. I mean, you know, I, I'm not sure if Chris has a coach these days, Ross, does he? Not that I know of. You Rock, know, Rocky obviously has Fran Davis, but I don't think Crowders has a coach. Good afternoon, everybody. Just a reminder, welcome to Super Saturday in Minnesota. Just want to let you know, we see a lot of cameras around. We are filming, so let's know, let the racquetball world know that racquetball is worth getting excited about. Let's make a little noise. Come on, make some noise. That's right. This is not tennis, this is racquetball. That's right, make some noise. And if you keep making noise, I got a lot of goodies for you, so next time out, I got some prizes for you. Back to the match. Good time out by Chris Crowther. He knows he's not playing good. He knows he might be a little nervous. He knows he might be letting the moment of being in the semifinal here against Rocky and the chance to be in the finals of the 2011 16th Annual U.S. Open is a little pressure, but he will calm down. Carson, drive serving 5-0. I don't know. I hope he calms down. Otherwise, this can get out of control quick, and this could be a, you know, a fast match. You know, Rock, Rocky has all the confidence in the world, so you just seem to hit the ball cleaner. You seem to, you know, move better when you have confidence against your opponent. And that's just what Rocky's doing. He's swinging freely, swinging smoothly. They've played many times over the past 10 years. I know you're a statistician expert, and you showed me that number yesterday, and I was shocked because you just wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't believe that that was actually the case. I think Chris is 0-24 against him if... Uh, that's correct. Yeah. I, think, I think it's 23. You know, it might be 24, but I, I believe my records show 23. Listen, once you get to O in anything past 4 or 5, four or five in five. my book, <laughs> it's not good for you when you're on the O side. So that's a little mental block on Chris's head, too. He knows he's a lot better than that. Chris lost it in the glass, but nonetheless, a point for Rocky Carson, commanding 7-0 lead here in the first game. Yeah, he's going to have to reset the mechanism. This is, this is the match everybody was waiting to see. Short serve by Carson. I mean, Russ, you know what I'm going to say. I know what, I, you know what, I know what you're going to say. Go ahead and finish my sentence. Yeah. Chris has, has to take that shot, and not that he should hit Rocky, but he should take the shot, pinch it, and if it happens to hit Rocky, it hits him because that should actually be a penalty hinder. Yeah, I mean, he, he can do one of two things. He can actually lightly hit him with the ball and say, yeah, I was going for that. That may give him an avoidable, or crush it down the line, you know, on the forehand side, oh, right. and, and, and you win the point. Yeah. I mean, he takes the chance, Rocky. He actually got the serve back. But you take the chance, Rocky scores a point. That's your own fault. Yeah, that's a, that's a mental mistake or a coaching mistake that it's a, a lot of players today too. make. But it's a confidence mistake. Yeah. you got to go out there swinging, being ready, you know, fire away. He, and, Russ, the first thing I noticed, he's not hitting the ball as clean and crisp and hard as he was yesterday. And that's because he's not as comfortable. His footwork isn't as comfortable. He was comfortable on that point. As Crowther on the board and the crowd appreciates it, they want to see a match. So do we. One serving seven. Yeah, I don't think th these foot faults are throwing him off, too. I mean, he's... 
He uh, usually, he, even though at six six, he usually doesn't fit fall. Right. But he has three so far today. Or maybe he doesn't. They're calling it. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens as a player is, you know, is you you when you get that foot fall called on you, you shorten up your stride, and all of a sudden you're changing your mechanics and your stroke on how you hit the ball, which in turn maybe forces you not to hit the ball as cleanly, confidently, and as crisply crisply as you do. Ace served by Rocky Carson, who told me yesterday that he's been working on his drive serve all off season. Now with the new two serve rule in its second year, you will see some of these players pounding away twice, trying to get that ace. Eight one Carson. Yeah, when you're not taking a swing at it like that, Russ, as you know. You know, what's happening is you're just not comfortable. You know, I can't say it enough. I can't stress it enough. But when you're just stabbing at it and pushing it back, you know, your footwork's not, you know, mechanically sound that day, and you're, and you're not comfortable mentally and physically. 9-1, Carson. I have to say hello to my good friend Mike Aguas back home in New York. Thank you, Mike for watching. We miss you out here. You need to get out here. Mike Water, as Pablo said. <laughs> well, Chris has to use the rest of this game to warm up, get his confidence back, not get too tired, because this is a time where there's a time to give up a game at 9-1, practice his serves a little, get a little more confidence, and come back... And forget the game. Yeah, what I would do, it's a good point, Russ. What I would do at this point, you know, if I'm down 9-1 and I feel like I have nothing going for me, is I would absolutely try to get one point at a time, work on something to get that one point at a time, and hey, you never know. I mean, I've come back from 10-2, 10-1, but yeah, you're kind of, you're really trying to say, okay, let me hit a perfect drive serve or a perfect shot, and sometimes good things happen. The other player tightens up, but I don't think Rocky's going to tighten up. You know, he's been here many times. That's, that's an outdoor handsy shot. Hmm. John Scott does that all the time. Yeah, Rocky d hasn't done too much wrong today. Yeah, but Chris, in, in, in Chris's defense, Rock, Chris hasn't done anything right. Nothing. Zero. So, you know, obviously it's a bad combo, hence 10-1 in the first. <laughs> we have an uh, email into the IoT network real quick from the Duck Hunter. Vince. Um... Sudsy got the nickname by having my father take suds off the top of beer, put it on my lips as an infant, and I used to go crazy and love it. That's the truth. Game point here. Rocky with a setup to win it. Game point, Rocky Carson. 11-1. We'll this is Russ Menino and Sudsy Munchak, and John Scott will be back for the second game right here on the IRT Network. Back to the action here. Thanks to Russ Menino for taking us through game number one. Rocky Carson. A lot of people expecting this to go five. Rocky making quick work here, though. Rocky won 11-1. The Russ Menino prediction, I believe, was uh, Rocky in five. I, 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 you know what, John? I'm not sure. Was Russ it? just said Rocky in seven. What was your prediction, Russ? Chris in, wow. wow. Chris in five. 
Well, it looks good. <laughs> Starting out. <laughs> you know, for such a powerful guy, Chris has some really great hands. I've really noticed his ability when he's caught up front to just flick his wrist and power the shot down in the front uh, corner. Oh, that's almost an ace. So Chris has some, some under undervalued, if you will, hands, I think, that people don't realize how good they are. Yeah, Chris has great hands. I mean, John, as you know, all these pro racquetball players are great athletes at other sports. Chris is a great golfer. A lot of people don't know really? that. Really? He's a great they golfer. They make clubs big enough for him? <laughs> he uses telephone poles. Uh. <laughs> he's, um, yeah, he's about a two or three handicap. And wow. as we all know, you know, you got to have great hands around the green to be a good golfer. Rocky off the back wall, goes wide right. Chris pops it right back up. Another opportunity for Rocky, puts it in the corner. And a nice shot. I was talking with Fran Davis between, uh, between matches, and um, she said, how you feeling? Who, who are you going to pick? Because, you know, kind of within the circle, we always kind of say, you know, Rocky 4, Rocky 5. We always do our little predictions amongst ourselves. And I said, you know, I, I think probably uh, it's going to go five games either way, and Rocky will stretch this out to a two-and-a-half-hour match because he <laughs> finds a way to do that almost all the time. And she said something that I'm not sure. I want to get clarification. We'll talk to her after this match. But she said, not the new Rocky Carson. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the new Rocky Carson looks like on the court. I know he's got some preppy outfits down there, so maybe that's a start. I like the shorts, though. Yeah. Yeah, I think she just means she's trying to mold him, John, into being a lot more aggressive and, and in a way, again, I want to patent this saying. Maybe you could help me out. There you go, Chris. Um, controlled chaos, you know, and kind of just be aggressive and always be on the offensive and, and really take over. And we're not out there to be, we're not out there to be friends. We're out there to play and compete. And, uh, you know, Rocky likes the limelight. He likes being on the stage. I mean, doesn't Justin Bieber like being out there? Same thing. It's just Rocky. I guess so. Absolutely. <laughs> with the drive serve catches the back wall nice serve Rocky up front keeps it going controlling center court nicely slices the ball and that's some good good action there oh and a broken ball bad break for two, Rocky two ball breakers out there Uno, dos for Pablo. That's a great shot from Carson. Carson once again just off center to the right. And the service box bringing the drive serve with the head submission. Blast it across the line. Chris has to go up top. Rocky retreats back from 37. Blast it down. Sells it just a little bit. That was aggressive. And that John. is a mean, angry shot right there. That's why they call him the crippler. That ball changed dimensions about six times on the way to the front wall. But that's what he needs to do. Just take a mean, angry, vicious cut at the ball. Two, two, game number two, Rocky down the line. Chris, again, forced up top. Controlling center court right now as Chris is not letting Rocky up front. Oh, and he skips a shot. Had an opportunity to put it down. You cannot miss those opportunities at this level, at this point of the game. He's not moving well. His footwork's off a little bit. He's behind the ball a little bit, and that's why he's not actually taking good cuts out of John, good clean swings. He's more flicking a lot of balls, which it's not going to get it done today. Carson staying in the box. Two serving two. Drive serve. Crowther steps into it. It's a good thing Rocky was out of the way. Crowther is, is from the Sudsy Monchick school of I'm swinging. 
Let the ref sort it all out. Yeah, don't hurt anybody, but take your swing because you just never know. You know, obviously, if there's a chance somebody's going to get hurt, then don't swing. Unless you don't like them. No, <laughs> just kidding. Coming down. And if you notice while you watch, the difference between the top two or three, four players on the planet and then five and everybody else is that they execute and finish their shots. So when they have setups and chances to win the rally, they do. We've been held at two serving two for quite a while now. Carson looking to get off of two. Chris cuts that shot off before it makes the back wall. Rocky up top. Off the sidewall now. Chris wide. Much better. That's a blast right there. Much better. Much better aggression. Much better power. Controlled chaos. Towel Boy's doing a fantastic job all weekend. They asked me to do it, John, but they didn't have a racquetball warehouse shirt big enough. <laughs> Down the line. There we go. Pounds it down the line, and Rocky couldn't catch up with the pace. And Crowther has broken the 2 2 tie. Three serving two, game number two. Carson won the first 11 1. He's playing way better. Not to state the obvious, but sometimes I do, Johnny. He's playing way better here in the start of game two than he did in game one. Right, Pablo? Nope. See, he won that, but I still want to see him take a mean, nasty cut because it's a, men it's a mental thing. You know, John, it's the mentality of I'm going to be angry and I'm going to be hitting the ball hard today. And I am going to impose my physical and mental will on you. That was an interesting attempt. I don't know if I would call that a dive or a... It was like a tree falling in a forest. <laughs> if Chris Crowther falls in a forest, <laughs> do you hear it? <laughs> Crowther with his biggest lead of this match. At two, scores four, serving two. That's disappointing if I'm Chris. <laughs> that I have a two-point lead, and it's the biggest lead of the match. Now, Chris is playing great this game, John. He's actually looks like a different player right now compared oh. to the first. Over the past three years, our statisticians are telling us that Rocky Carson and Chris Crowther, not including this match, have played nine times. Crowther has won zero of them. Oh, over the last three years, the last nine three times. Years. I think. I think... I think lifetime, it's 0 for 24 or 23. 23 and 0 actually is his record against Crowther. Rocky with a nice diving get. Crowther's going to step into this forehand. Goes cross court. Rocky can't catch up, with that. catch up with that. Crowther with a nice shot in the crowd. Appreciating the action. Packed house here at the U.S. Open in Minneapolis, Minnesota. 
I'll tell you, John, at 20, 0 and 23 for Crippler, one of the reasons why I think this is such a bad matchup is because Rocky doesn't play that turn and burn, bang, bang game. He hits a lot of that sloppy stuff, slices, keeps you off balance. And I think Chris is way better when he's balanced and it's in his wheelhouse and he can take a real good cut at it. And that's one of the reasons. And I also think that Rocky played Cli uh, Chris a lot of times as he was learning how to play the pro game. As you just said, it's nine times in three years. It's not, it's not nine times in the last year. So I think Chris is a much better player today. Maybe there'll be a different result. Side out called. Rocky says three bounces. Another interesting statistic, according to the stats, 10 IRT players have winning records against Rocky Carson. Not 10 current, but 10 total. I'll name them at our next breaking point. Well, I want you to allow me to start the naming, and let's see how close I can come. Okay. It's a side out call. Rocky, I think, is trying to trying to go toe to toe a little too much with Chris right here. I think where he's at is uh, you know trading blows, which you, you don't want to do with the Crippler. I'd like to see him maybe grind it out a little bit more, moving moving him around and then put the ball down versus just go for big swing after big swing. Chris is hitting the ball better now. He's hitting it harder, but as you saw there, he lost that rally as soon as he flicked the ball. He needs to, believe it or not, be more aggressive. Cuatro, cuatro. You're welcome, Pablo. Four, four. Rocky, almost dead center of the box. Bringing the drive serve. Short serve call. Line judges out there. Brian Pineda and Tony Carson. Questions for Suds and I can be sent in to info at irtnetwork.com. John, I'm working on getting my buddy Jeff Conine here, two-time World Series win winner in the MLB and excellent racquetball player and also an all-star MVP. Try to get him up on here on the mic. That would be a good time. That would be fun. That would be awesome, actually. Going through the text now, sending him a picture of our location. That's how big this club is. <laughs> I just got a text from Eric Mueller, the chairman of the IRT board. He just named the 10 that have a winning record. And, and the first thing we'll have to ask, the statement you made was there are 10 IRT players. Are they current, past, future, or history? In the history. In the history. Okay. Well, I'm gonna, we're going to rattle these off, and I'm going to see if we can name them. All right. Okay, guys, we're going to give you some goodies. What a perfect time to do Thanks it. Thanks to our sponsors. Why don't we give a round of applause to... All right, Sudsy. Let's see... Uh, of course, if you're looking at Eric's list, that's probably going to be cheating. Well, no, I don't think Eric cheated. Eric's an old school player, and he knows the game. Oh, no, no. I thought you were going to try to name him. No, I, I am, but I am going to. My list would be very similar to this. Okay, let's, let's hear him. All right, you ready? Yep. And I don't know. We do not have the list in front of us. I have the list in front of me. I will start with Sudsy, nope. myself. Actually, no. Five and five live. That's wrong. It's already wrong. <laughs> Trust me, I played him more than ten times. All right. All right, Cliff. Cliff Swain has a record of seven, or excuse me, of 12 and seven, so that one is correct. Jason Menino. Jason Menino is another at 25 and 20. Jack Huzak. Jack Huzak has a record of 21 and 15. The kid Kane was a Lenchuk. You don't even need to confirm that. Absolutely. Kane's, <laughs> Kane's record is 37 I and 1 oh my God. against Rocky Carson. That I mean, can we talk about that at some point? This is clearly the number two ranked player in the world, and Rocky's fantastic. He's 37 and 1 against him. We'll get back Absolutely. to that. That's impressive. Absolutely. John Ellis. John Ellis. Um. No, John Ellis is nine, excuse me, seven and nine against the great Rocky Carson. 
Some of these you may have to dig back a little bit. Mike Gidry. Mike Gidry is five and three. Derek Robinson. Oh, my goodness. Big I haven't D. thought of Big D. The Big D Road Show. Do you remember that? Let's see. Uh, no. No? Rocky is six and one lifetime. On wow, Derek. against Derek. Yeah. Impressive. Add uh, Andy Roberts. Andy Roberts. Yep. One and oh. They only played once in the end of I'm Andy's still, career. Rocky and I, by the way, ha- and you know I have an ego, uh-huh. have played way more than ten times. And I actually sent Todd Boss. I'm assuming that's where you're getting the info. Absolutely. A bunch of stats he didn't have. Oh, wow. Yeah, he had like 12 missing tournaments for me or something. So as we get started, let me name off the rest. I did make them up, though. <laughs> no, just Michael Bronfield, 1-0. Mike Saricia, uh, 1-0. Gidry, 5-3. Jack, 21-15. Adam Karp, 3-0. He had, oh. Eric had Adam Karp. Did Karp. he really? He's got Adam Karp. Oh, that's good. That's yep. a good one. Uh, Menino, 25-20. James Mulcock. Mulcock, yeah. Mulcock. That was a great junior player. One and zero. Oh. Todd wow. O'Neill, one and zero. Oh. Andy Roberts, Todd one and zero. Todd O'Neill, one and zero. Oh. Twelve and seven. Todd's the only guy's name you've said that's heavier than <laughs> a lot of guys. <laughs> and then Kane Waslinchuk, thirty-seven and one. I mean, you can you that's fathom brutal. that? That's well, it's also impressive. I mean, at what point do we stop talking about rivalry? Well, there is no rivalry. Let's face it. You know, the game, and just talk about Kane. You know, let's talk about that. Again, Rocky actually has more wins lifetime on tour over Chris Crowther than any other person on tour. And you think Crowther's thinking about that right now? Rocky with a three-wall shot. Chris steps into that backhand. Rocky down the line. Chris trying to take back center. Center court and almost got Rocky with the racket. Now blasted down the right side. What a nice pass. Listen to the crowd, ladies and gentlemen. They love the action. It's absolutely electric. Crowd is amped up today, John. Hey, if anybody gets a chance and they're in downtown Minneapolis and John and Pablo, go eat breakfast at Hell's Kitchen. We almost went there the other day. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Huevos Rancheros, yummy. Speaking of restaurants, want to say hi to the folks up in Hubert. Got a VIP lounge up there watching the IRT network. Oh, a sidewall, backwall, Cliff Swain rollout. Hubert's always does a great job. Love it. Thank you for the support, Hubert's. Rocky back in control again here, John. Carson, drive surf. I've noticed one big thing in the drive surf from Rocky. Oh, and there's a big miss. So, I don't know if you remember this, but uh, last year we were talking about Rocky and his drive serve and how he seemed to be missing a lot. I was also talking about just the drive serve in general. Watch Rocky's front foot this year. Go back in the archives and look at Rocky's front foot last year. This year, Rocky is pointing his foot towards the front wall. Last year, Rocky was pointing his foot towards the side wall. It makes a huge difference on two things. One, power. It's a good stroke mechanic on the surf. And two, you have a lot less foot faults. Chris, yes, I've, I've seen that. I've noticed that, John. I'm sorry. I just want to comment real quick on that last rally. Did you see how crowded and how close? I don't know if you can get a replay this quick. Rocky and how uncomfortable Rocky looked. That's what Chris needs to do. Get big, stay big, and make Rocky play around him. Absolutely. A little bit of, uh, little bit of hockey positioning going on in there. Some body check. Chris almost steps completely over the line there. No call. And Rocky catches a sidewall. Chris sponsored by E-Force. Rocky with head. Racquetball rackets. Next towel timeout, we'll hit the head instant replay cam. Look at the crowding. <laughs> Look at the stands piling in, Johnny. I like this. Carson taking his sweet time on the serve here. Drive serve, backhand side. Crowther got tied up just a little bit. And Rocky on the board with his seventh point. If you're new to racquetball, games are three out of five to 11. Must win by two. And you get two serves. The first ball is short or long or ceiling. The first serve, rather, then it would be a second serve. The women, very similar rules except one serve. Carson down to the drive serve stance. There's a drive serve, backhand side. Chris cuts it off before he hits the back wall. Rocky's going to take this. 
shoots it down the line. He's got to catch up to that, and he got it. Three-wall shot. Nice get. Crowther, though, controlling center court like the giant he is and buries it. Right corner. Nice shot from Chris Crowther to stand in and knock that ball out. I think, uh, I think we saw a little bit of a change up in speed there. Chris looked like he was going to pound the ball and, and then uh, pulled the string a little bit. Took some off that. I think it may have fooled Rocky. If we have a breaking point, uh, we have a viewer asking Sudsy about uh, the new coaching role that you're taking, especially with Andy Hawthorne. Your thoughts on that. And we'll address that as we go along. And there's another skip ball. Look for Rocky to take a timeout in just a second as he's starting to get a little emotional. Yeah, well, Chris is in it. Chris is playing big. Again, he's playing big, and he's hitting the ball hard. He stopped flicking the ball. So let's see if he can keep this run up. Rocky looks a little bit uncomfortable. Definitely. He doesn't look as sure of himself as he did in that first game at 11-1. Crowder trying to break the, sir, or break the score here at the tie. Rocky's got an opportunity here. Goes down the line. Crowder's right there. Goes up top. Rocky from 37 feet, big forehand down the line, has to get out of the way. I love, I love the body positioning of big Chris Crowther. And if you notice, Sean, that's great. I love that you saw that. If, as he took that shot, did you watch him bring his 6'6 frame back Absolutely. into Rocky, Rocky, towards Rocky? Or Chris, rather, seems like his big frame has actually gotten bigger. His wingspan is about 13 feet long, and he's just moving Rocky all it, over the place. It, it really is. I mean, it's got to be, right? He's 6'6". A walkie-talkie went off in the crowd. Programming note, that's the first time on the IRT network we've ever said walkie-talkie. <laughs> Drive to the backhand side. Oh, foot fault called. I don't know if he's foot faulting or not, but it definitely throws off your momentum and your rhythm. Um, if I'm Chris, if I'm coaching Chris, tell him don't change a thing. But you know what? You're going to have to shorten your stride a little bit. Right. Good shot. That's a bomb right there. And that was the Rocky Carson. If I miss that shot, I'm dead because he was on the back wall. He was done. 38 feet, 39 feet, sitting on the wall at the end. What's your, what's your view on the foot fault? It's a rule. I, I like that it's in there. It makes them think a little bit more. But as a big drive server, what, what's your thoughts on that? It has to be there. I mean, otherwise you're allowing your opponent to, you know, change the, every angle. You get closer to the front wall. You know, what happens next? Do we just go up to the front court and, you know, and hit a serve or... Could we stand at the five-foot line? Can we stand in center court and just lob it up? I mean, it has to be there. It's a good roll. 8-8, eight, eight, Johnny. Game two. We got a little bit of a match here. Game. Absolutely. Chris pulls this off. We have a match. We've had three ties at four. Or excuse me, four ties at two, four, seven, and possibly eight. Or no, actually it is eight. It is they eight, have the score down here in the crowd. That's a bomb of a serve. Rocky with an opportunity here to take the lead. And on his back foot, buries it. That's the aggressive part of Rocky that we saw a lot in the first game. And uh, Fran said that she had been working with him a little bit to not rally as much. You know, Rocky has that tendency to rally because he's, he's probably, maybe arguably, the, the fittest guy on tour. Or the top, the, the other two of the top three may, uh, may disagree. Sudsy thinks he's the fittest guy. I said fit Clearly. with an I. Oh, oh, oh. Not at with an A. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right for the diving get. Has to get Perfect. out of the way there. Oh, it. Perfect execution. Uh, looked like right he was going to get to it, but he was unable to. Want to say hi to Kim Roy in the audience? During the towel timeout, we'll take a look at the head instant replay. And look at Chris just standing, just towering in front court, pretty much not letting Rocky get anywhere. Look for Chris to take the shot and back his body into Rocky, towards Rocky's area. Chris doing a fabulous job controlling center court. It's like a uh, you sunk my battleship type thing out there. Almost a footfall. No, and a you, bad rollout. And, th and that's why he hit such a bad serve right there, because he shortened his stride so much. If you noticed, he was about a foot behind the front line. 
So he's thinking about it. So it's in his head now. Oh, he's calling out the towel boy. Again, I, the, the quote, best part of my game, I think, is my drive serve, if there is such a thing. And uh, watch the difference in Rocky. Shut up, Pablo. Watch the difference in Rocky's front foot versus Chris Crowther's front foot. Completely different. I doubt you'll see Rocky football, and you'll see a lot of that from Chris. If he would turn his foot open, he'd have a lot less footballs. Pablo yelling at the DJ to turn off the music. La musica. Me gusta la musica. This is Z's serve to the backhand side. Carson. That's a nice serve. Chris yelling at himself knows that he just kind of put a layup out there. Just got a text from one of the sponsors that says, and I quote, if Chris doesn't win this one, it's over. <laughs> He's predicting a match ending three games. If you're just joining us, Paula Longoria, one and three over Samantha Salas earlier today to move on to the finals tomorrow. Mexico, strong show. I tell you what, um, absolutely, in the IRT and the uh, W Pro, Mexico, South of Board, Bolivia, South America, it's, it's becoming a huge hotbed. It, it is. It really for racquetball. is. It is. There was a lot of Costa Ricans here who are playing great I got beat by one. one. Did you? I think. It's a big serve from Rocky. Good serve. What you have to do on that is just cut, step up and cut it off before it hits the sidewall. Ten serving eight. Carson serving for the driver. Backhand side. Chris stretches out. He's got it. Rocky's got daylight off the back wall. Stays on the backhand side. Chris swinging a miss. Rocky two games to none. Rocky Carson won. Game one, 11 1. He won the next 11 8. We've got some great racquetball action here in Minneapolis at the 2011 U.S. Open. More great racquetball action coming your way right here on the IRT Network. Game three, Rocky Carson serving. Rocky Carson up two games to zero here at the semifinals. 2011 U.S. Open Racquetball Championships. John Scott getting uh, some technical stuff set up so we can get Jeff Conine up here. Jeff Conine, if you guys are obviously sitting by your computer, just Google him. You'll see how great of a Major League Baseball career he did have. You know, one of the things I think when I think about Jeff Conine is uh, basically there's one way that I, I describe him, he's the, uh, I, I would say that Derek Jeter is uh, the Jeff Conine of New York. That's, you know what, John? I lived in South Florida for three and a half years. What he does for the community as far as the Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital, um, he is. I mean, I'm a New Yorker, obviously. Derek Jeter has a flawless rep uh, reputation in New York. Jeff Conine is really the Derek Jeter of South Florida and uh, he's a great guy he's a friend he's a great racquetball player and uh, he loves the sport and he's as you saw we just grabbed him he's going to be more than happy to come up and do a quick interview should be good for you guys and be fun and Jeff will enjoy it and you'll enjoy his stoic monotone personality he's not <laughs> quite as animated as you and I are that'll be great but he is one of the biggest and best celebrities to ever play the game One one game three, Rocky Carson, Chris Crowther. Side out from Crowther. 
Perfect time. Ready to go here. 1 1, game three. Chris Crowther serving. Down two games to zero. Jeff Conine has just entered the booth, so we will get him up here in a second. John's going to wire him up. Skip ball, good call. But again, Chris is imposing his physical will. He's getting wide, he's getting big, and he's forcing, he's forcing Rocky to play around him as opposed to Rocky just gliding around the court, dancing like he's all by himself on Dancing with the Stars. That'll be my first question to Jeff. Will he be on Dancing with the Stars? Two zero. I've been there. You get a little bit lackadaisical. You're up two zero. You feel like you're in total control, and this happens a lot. You know that's one thing Kane is great at. He just puts the throttle down, steps on your trachea when he's up two games to zero. I actually thought that was short. Jeff getting wired here in a second. Thought that was a short serve. I can't see. That's why I don't ref anymore. I can see. I'm just a terrible ref. Yeah, definitely what Kane does better than I ever did, and Cliff did it better than me, too, was I enjoy to entertain the crowd. So when I was up 2-0, I might slow it down a little bit. Side out, one serving four. <laughs> Rocky's up two games to one, excuse me, two games to none, 11-1, 11-8. Finds himself down here early in game number three, two serving four. Joined now by Jeff Conine. Jeff, uh, thank you very much for joining us. I know you've got actually a, a match coming up, but uh, what do you think about this event? Well, it's the first time uh, for me at the U.S. Open, and obviously I've heard a, a lot about the tournament and uh, the excitement that it uh, generates and... Uh, Probably the best, most exciting event that I've ever been to. How long have you been a fan of racquetball? Well, I mean, I started playing when I was 10 years old, uh, back in 1977. So, back in the old golden days of racquetball. Steve Surratt and uh, Steve Keeley and Rich Wagner and all those guys. So, uh, a long time. It's funny that you mentioned Steve Surratt. He's actually uh, on the Hall of Fame ballot this year for the Racquetball Hall of Fame. So, that'll be good. Good to have them in. Um, so this is your first time here at the U.S. Open. And, you know, when, when I think about, I was just talking with Sudsy, you know, people say Jeff Conine, you know, you're a legend down in Florida. You play with the Marlins, actually several teams, but the Marlins. Uh, that's where you won your World Series, is that right? A couple of them. Both World Series in uh, 1997 and 2003. Very fortunate to uh, even have been a part of postseason and even more fortunate to have a couple of World Series rings. I'm jealous. I you should say. be. <laughs> yeah, I am. Because I know you'd be rocking that bling big time. Yeah. <laughs> I could see you so on a big-ass ring like that. I, I would have them both. My claim to fame with Jeff is I won the 10 and under Junior Nationals. He won the 18 and under at the same time. Oh. And he was playing baseball for UCLA. Yes. Almost missed the finals, right? Remember that? Yeah, I had a, actually an automobile breakdown on the way to the finals, and, or semifinals, actually. And Bobby Rodriguez was uh, sportsmanlike enough to hold up the match for me. So i gotta, uh, I got to ask you guys. Um, how in the world do you guys know each other? Through the yeah. wonderful sport of racquetball. Wonderful sport of racquetball. And uh, I don't know, Suds is a little bit of a baseball fan, <laughs> especially a couple of those New York teams. And uh, when I came to town and tickets were to be had, I always heard from Sudsy. Walter Klugowitz. No, Jeff, Jeff and I know each other a long time. I mean, I'm 36. We know each other over 20 years, or about 20 years. Just want to watch this rally here. Down Rocky want to hinder there. Nope. Chris and, taking uh, advantage of the shot and putting it down. Jeff is married to Tim Doyle, the great Tim Doyle's Oh, well, congratulations. Sister. Oh, Tim Doyle's <laughs> sister. Yeah, I was hoping you were going to qualify I was that in a second. <laughs> I was considering not finishing. No, but Jeff, uh, Jeff beat me a couple times, too. Beat me in national doubles. That's right. Jeff could have been easily a top pro if he decided that he wanted to play. But I think he took the right choice and went Major League Baseball. What do you think? I, I would say so. So, uh, Jeff, what divisions are you playing here at the Open? 
I'm sorry? What divisions are you playing here at the Open? Um, I originally was entered in uh, three divisions, um, and then after <laughs> about my first match of practice about a month ago, I decided that that was way too many. <laughs> so I cut it down to two. I'm in the 45s and the uh, 40 mixed doubles with uh, my wife, Cindy. Oh, cool. And look for us to play 35 doubles at national doubles. That, that you'll want to get on is the that a, Is that a, a thing in stone? Are we going to get to see that? Uh, not in stone. It it's might up, be on paper right now. <laughs> uh, I'm down with flammable it. Flammable paper that's uh, <laughs> in pencil. In pencil. Hey, but, I'm uh, <laughs> you never know. It's uh, depending on my obligations with the Marlins. I am special assistant to the president there, and I do work in the front office. So um, that is uh, right around the start of spring training. So I got to see what my schedule looks like. All right. Well, Jeff, it's uh, it's it's an honor to get to meet you uh, both on and off the air. Thank you for for being a great fan of the sport. And thanks for being here and, and being on the air here on the IRT Network. I know, like I said, you've got a match coming up, so good luck in that. And hopefully we'll see you at many other events. I want a prediction before you leave. Who wins the tournament? Which tournament? Uh, this one. <laughs> Which division? There's a lot of divisions well, er- here. Eric Mueller already texted me that you will clearly win the 40, he's a 45s. Really? Yes. Eric Mueller. <laughs> yeah, he, he actually it's, sent it's that text. Bold, he's watching. That's a statement. And, uh, I don't think he really knows how much pain I'm in right now. <laughs> well, we so aren't telling it, everybody about that. It's definitely a pain factor. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> if I can, if I can, uh, I feel like I've been in a car accident. I've had three easy matches so far, so hey, it's interesting. I got to ask you this because I'm a big baseball fan and racquetball fan, and I know you've been at this many times um, on a lot bigger stage. But what what do you feel racquetball did for you? when you went onto the baseball field how did it help you because a lot of people always say to me hey you're gonna let your son play racquetball and he's a baseball player and i know your son's a big baseball player what are the positives the negatives what do you feel you know you took onto the baseball field from racquetball uh i could list the positives and it would uh cover quite a bit i could see no negatives uh i thoroughly encourage any parent that uh, has their kid in any sport to get him to play racquetball uh, your foot speed, hand speed, hand-eye coordination is uh, greatly enhanced by this sport. I don't think I would have been as good of a baseball player as I was without uh, my early days as a junior racquetball player. Wow. So do, do, do your kids have any interest in playing racquetball right now? You know what? Uh, unfortunately, we're in Florida, and the, the game there has uh, declined in such a way that it's just t- tough to find courts, uh, and they're so ingrained in their sports now and, and high school and um, – you know, it's a lot busier nowadays than it was when we were first playing. Baseball's a year-round sport now mm-hmm. in Florida. Or growing up, it was only uh, one season, and we had a chance to play racquetball. So, um, although my son was getting pretty into this tournament, I saw that. Watching, yeah, yeah, I did see that. It's just, well, that's what happens. You know, the kids, the kids come out, and everybody that's watching and, li- and watching and listening. You know, when people see racquetball at the highest levels or any level it's a fun great game and all of a sudden you have people saying my son wants to do it he's always wants to get out on the court i have the same issues it's just tough to find those courts and he's always busy with basketball or baseball or whatever but um i agree with you 100 percent. i think it helps every sport you play in but you you know you look at the athleticism of these guys and and how they cover the court and what they're able to do and uh people that have not ever seen it at the highest levels when they do become fans I agree. So hopefully we can put this stadium court in the new Marlin Stadium that you guys are building. Hmm. Wow, 37,000 strong. We'd be watching racquetball. That'd be insane. That'd be great. We'll have to get Eric Mueller involved in that conversation. Those numbers get way too big for me. <laughs> way too big. <laughs> so he's, he's good with numbers, though. Yeah, he's okay. Jeff, who would win in a match between you and Eric Mueller? A wrestling match? I would kill him. <laughs> A mm. uh, racquetball match? I, I don't know if Eric's listening out there right now. I don't know how much he's been playing. or I know he's you know the old Goldman Sachs guy. You know, Still there. Back real, there. Real busy with all the financial stuff. And you know maybe he's forgotten about the sport of racquetball. But I do know he's got uh, a lifetime doubles partner, right? That, that's correct. I've yeah. heard about that. He, I heard that story, Eric. Good story. Well, I, I can be your lifetime doubles partner if you promise me I'm a bench coach for the Marlins next year. Whoa. <laughs> no, I, I have to answer that because I've watched Jeff play all weekend. And Eric's one of my best friends, and I love him. Okay, guys, if you make some noise. Jeff's still the playing some ball. Some He's, oh, yeah? yeah, it's like riding a bike. Come He's still now. hitting the ball as hard as anybody, and it hasn't seemed to be an issue. So Jeff and Eric, you're picking, uh, you're picking Jeff? I didn't say that <laughs> because Eric's going to text me immediately. I'm <laughs> waiting for one of our phones to go off. I will, for entertainment reasons and conflict reasons, I will have to say. It'll be a draw. I, I, uh, it, it'd be tough. I mean, it, it, Jeff's hitting the ball well. He's hitting the ball hard. 
serving well, but Eric's playing a little bit still. He's playing a little bit of squash, but Jeff's in great shape. He stays in great shape. Eric's working a lot. Ah, it's a tough call. Well, I mean, if they one both of the top train, players of all time, I've never seen you try to get away from a question like this. They're Ooh. both good friends. And oh, like yeah. Jeff said, I may need tickets. And soon. I'm standing right next to him. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's what's if funny. I wasn't here, if you were talking about this conversation out of my earshot, it would be Eric Mueller. All Five seconds sure. after you leave, I'll say Eric I, I, Mueller. I will say no comment. <laughs> uh, uh, that will be a tough one that I'd love to see. Just like the charity match we had this morning. Maybe we can With get Conai Mueller out here. I would love to see Conai Mueller. What do you think? Who wins it if you're ready to go? I mean, I'm an athlete. What am I going to say? <laughs> I'm going to get beat? No, yeah. I mean, I exactly. got to say I'm going to win. But I'm still waiting for you to commit to the 35s for us. I told you. It's on paper and pencil. That's doused with, doused with Rice gas- paper. gasoline right now. He- here's the next question because, you know, you got a lot of Major League Baseball fans listening and watching also. Of all the great players you've played with, and you've played with all of them um, in Major League Baseball, anybody that you've either been on the court with as a, as a baseball player playing racquetball or anybody that you thought would be a great racquetball player. And then I'm going to end it on, I want you to tell everybody the story with Bo Jackson yeah. when you first came into the majors and he didn't realize you were almost a professional racquetball player at the time, but being such a great athlete, we'll get back to that. Any baseball players that you ever had on the court or would have liked to get on the court or would pretty good and you had on the court a thought could have been good racquetball players uh never had one on the court that i thought would have been a good racquetball player um i played with a lot of uh not only great uh baseball players but great athletes that uh brian roberts one of my best friends over at uh, the baltimore orioles compact quick i think he would have been a great uh, racquetball player uh, Ichiro, I think, would have been a great racquetball really? player. Oh, Ichiro? my God, the fastest human being I've ever seen. Yeah? Hand-eye coordination like you've never seen before. Yeah, he, like, moves before he hits the ball. Yeah, right? it's it's impressive. Hmm. If I tried to hit a baseball like that, I'd miss every single time. <laughs> so it, it was fun to watch him play. Um, I always used to love watching you hit, and the announcers would always say, like, after he'd get a home run or hit, like, I think after you took Smoltz deep in the All-Star game and hit a home run, and you got the MVP. I think one of the announcers, I'm not positive it was that game, but it was a lot of times, they'd always say something about racquetball, and I thought that was great for the sport. Mm -hmm. They'd say, Jeff Conine is a world-class rack. They said world-class, you know, racquetball player, and I wonder why did you Why did you do parentheses with your fingers right there when you said world-class? I mean, Well, because that was their term. Uh, uh, uh. I didn't necessarily agree with it. Let me ask you a question. (laughs) That's messed up. If you played Jeff Conine on the racquetball court, who would win? I would. <laughs> and he's right next to me. <laughs> right I, now, I can't I, dispute that right now. <laughs> I cannot dispute that. Give me another month. I might. I don't know, Suds. He's still playing, and you're not. Well, I could tell you this: that we trained together in South Florida a few times in squash, and he abused me. He actually <laughs> embarrassed me. Ran me around like a roll of toilet paper. It wasn't fun for me at the end because I felt bad. Like I felt like he was wasting time coming to work out with me. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it pretty much was a waste of time. <laughs> we had fun anyway. Yeah, we did. Well, <laughs> I had, you I had did. A good time laughing at Suds. <laughs> yeah, I was just tired. You know what? I probably have been called to a court right now, and they're probably waiting for me. Yeah, Jeff. I was just, just going to say, Jeff, thanks a lot for joining thanks. us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Love having you on the IRT Network. If you enjoyed the interview, it'll be out on DVD shortly. And, uh, Jeff, we look forward to seeing you down the road in, uh, in this game of Rockabout. My pleasure. Uh, great to be here, and hopefully uh, we get back into the sport a little bit. See what our what time is. National doubles. Hey, man. 35. If I can do it, I'm in. Conine Munchik. All right. All right. Thanks a lot, Jeff Conine. He just shook my hand and nearly broke it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. His nickname back in the day, and you hear it on ESPN, was Conan the Barbarian. (laughs) But he he seemed a lot bigger to me when I was younger. (laughs) No, he's a, Jeff's a great guy, a phenomenal racquetball player. And obviously, if you, like I said, you want to take a look at his. His Major League Baseball career, very impressive. And I had a Kathy Gills coming that she's enjoying listening to the interview. Hello, Kathy. Rocky Carson up two games to one, uh, two games and none, 11 1, 11 8. He's down here by two. Rocky threatening. Five serving seven. Crowther needs to make a move right here. Center of the box with a big drive serve down the line, short serve. We need to say hello to Chris Conrad watching the match in the airport lounge here at MSP, also known as Minneapolis St. Paul. I love Chris Conrad. He was here yesterday in a booth watching on the IRT Network. Chris Conrad is one of the greatest individuals that racquetball has right now, and I have to tell you because we are behind the scenes, John, and we get to, you know, we're privy to a lot of information. He is a tremendous asset, great individual, and and he loves the sport, and, and we couldn't be happier having him involved. So thanks, Chris. 
Did he say shorts, Charlie? I think so. I think he said shorts. He was commenting on Rocky shorts. It was two serves at once. <laughs> Hello to Ramont Harris saying hey to Sudsy. Ramont, what's up, my friend? He wrote you no. a book, so I'll forward that to you. Another famous uh, Ramont comedian, HBO. He's picking Kane in three, unless Rocky brings a surfboard, and then Kane in four. <laughs> Is that what he said? Yeah. yeah so now you know why he's a comedian. <laughs> Ramon, can you do us a favor? Please text us or email us one-liners for every match. Absolutely. And John, by the way, will take will not give you credit. He I will, will not give them. you credit. I will steal it. And it was a and tremendous. And then I will copyright it. <laughs> Somebody uh, emailing in wanting to know the Bo Jackson story. We forgot oh, to get that he part. left. Well, I know it. I'll tell you. I'll tell you real quick. 8-5, second serve. Tell you in a second here, Johnny. Nine serving, five. Carson... Two points away from making a finals run. And we did have a prediction yesterday that Carson would win. Be Kane. Would be Kane. Carson would win uh, in the finals. I'm, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm not Nostradamus, but I'm going to say no. I'll tell you right now, it probably won't happen, but I made that prediction. Oh, was it you? It All was right. me. Well, that's fun and interesting, but. I, I, I know that he can I don't know that he will, but I'm picking Rocky. Right. If he gets past Chris and Kane gets past Looks like Jose. he's going to. There's a big football there. So real, real quick, the Bo Jackson story, if you guys are interested. When Jeff first came, when he got signed by the Kansas City Royals and came up, he was literally about, he could have been a pro racquetball player easily. He's a phenomenal pro racquetball player. And if everybody remembers Bo Jackson, Bo Jackson played two sports. He played. He was the first player to play Major League Baseball, and he played NFL football, and he was a tremendous athlete. So they were in the massage room in the locker room for Kansas City, and Jeff's getting a massage, and Bo Jackson's next to him getting a massage. Bo Jackson turns to Jeff and says, oh, I hear you're a uh, pretty good racquetball player. Bo Jackson, being the competitive great athlete he is, says, yeah, you're pretty good. And Jeff, John, you know, you could tell his personality right there. He's just a humble, soft-spoken, right. very, you know... He's almost monotone and stoic. Let's just watch this rally. Rocky with a good get, Chris. Oh, with a big skip. I'm going to have to run through this story. Small children are crying right now after that yell. So he, uh, so Bo Jackson says, oh, I hear you're a pretty good racquetball player. And Bo Jackson, being the competitive great athlete he is, says, why don't we play sometime? And we'll bet. And Jeff kind of chuckled and goes, yeah. Bo Jackson wanted to play Jeff at $10,000. <laughs> and, and Jeff just said, whenever you want. And they never played. And we'll anyway, he actually thought he could beat him. And here's Rocky, serving for the match. Ten serving five. Short serve, middle of the service box. That was an impressive, angry flick yeah, back to the was, back. He wouldn't, it was a no-look flick back. Stand by for the Pro Pin HD play of the match. Once again, here we are at second serve. Ladies and gentlemen, Rocky Carson Ladies and gets gentlemen, by Chris Crowder, Rocky Carson, and three. Chris Crowder. Rocky Carson is looking really, really good. 